Well, Baccarinos, it's the final round. Time to get hard or go home. All right, so watching the first nine episodes of Watamote, you might start to think that young Miss Kuroki is incapable of learning from her mistakes. It's just scheme after ill-considered, poorly planned scheme to further her quest for approval. And while I admire Tomoko's dedication to her efforts, her core motivation is ultimately shallow. She wants to be cool and popular, and her expectations are completely cartoonish. Or should I say, anime-ish. Hmm? <sighs> All right. I'm sorry. I, w I won't do that again. I want to make a public apology for that joke. I, I won't. I'll never. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean it. So, anyway, there's a change that takes place in the latter part of the show where Tomoko's motivations and plans begin to evolve into a more realistic effort for friendship and human connection. Now, in episode 9, she's still up to her old tricks, hoping to get a job at a trendy cafe like Yuchan has because somehow that'll make her cool. As always, the fantasies she concocts have absolutely no grounding in reality. Like, look at this. That's a different face. That's a different body. That's a different person. She's just having a fantasy about some chick who stole her hair. Also, they should have used anything but chocolate for this part. That's just, oof. That's upsetting. <laughs> Don't do that. Of course, nothing goes as planned. Due to a misunderstanding, she ends up working in a cake factory and feeling just as socially isolated there as she does anywhere else. Tomoko has many flaws, but when watching this show, you'll also notice that the universe of Watamote is not kind to her. It rarely does her any favors. Anyway, my point is, at this stage, we're still in classic Tomoko mode. The turning point happens in episode 10. Earlier, I mentioned this scene where she wins a stuffed animal and brings it home, believing that she'll get along well with it. However, sitting in a room with this inanimate object only serves to accentuate just how isolated she really is. She doesn't react with tears or despondency, but shock and horror as she's suddenly and inescapably confronted by her own loneliness. But as is the Tomoko M.O., she doesn't dwell on her sorrow for long before taking action. The difference is that this time, the action is towards a much more sensible goal. The next day, she sees a bulletin board advertising her school's various clubs, and she decides to start one of her own. This is the first time in the series that she's come up with a solid, practical plan and a reasonable set of expectations. And that's the most important thing to note in this scene. Tomoko's fantasy regarding the outcome of this plan. It isn't her usual movie-like self-indulgent bullshit. She just wants to start a club, meet a handful of other students, and spend some time with them. She wants a group of friends, not popularity, not adulation, just some people to socialize with. This is a great idea, and there's absolutely no reason why it couldn't succeed. She's still got crippling social phobia, but as we've seen, Tomoko is a little more at ease when she's talking about something she's interested in. If she were in a club with other students who share a common interest, that might give her an avenue to struggle through some of her anxiety and make a connection with someone. So what kind of club are you going to start, Tomoko? Anime club? Club? Video game club? Awkward but very overt sexual attraction to your best friend club? These are all things you're an expert in. Apparently not. It's just a club. It's, it's a club for people who want to be in a club. That, that's her idea. And so her application is immediately rejected for being too vague. To me, this is one of the saddest moments in the show. It was a good idea, Kuroki. It just failed in the execution. You should have stuck with it. It could have worked out, and it could have been exactly what you needed. The problem here is that Tomoko makes no effort to revise her application and submit it again because she's used to trying one thing, failing, and immediately abandoning it in favor of a new plan. That aside, the important point here is that she's learning to think more realistically. Granted, these last three episodes of the show are still salted with a couple of idiotic, get popular quick schemes, such as impressing her classmates with her hot friend, or recording their conversations to see what they say about her. But they're no longer the main focus of the show, just brief humorous detours. There's a trend happening here, and it continues in episode 11, where she makes several attempts to involve herself in preparations for her school's culture festival. She even goes so far as to struggle through 
initiating a conversation with these two girls to offer help. She really wants to be involved, however minorly, and is willing to confront her anxiety to do so. Now, one of these attempts ends in disaster when Tomoko cuts herself and nearly loses the one pint of blood she's got in her tiny anemic body, but the second one goes well, giving her two important victories in this episode. She manages to convince her classmates to let her help, and she successfully participates in setting up some chairs in the gym. And yeah, I know, it doesn't seem like anything worth throwing a party over, but for someone with this level of social impairment, these are victories. Make no mistake. She set a realistic goal for herself, tried, failed, tried again, and succeeded. This is a first for her, and it's interesting to note the effect it has on her demeanor. At the end of the day, she's approached by upperclassman Megumi, who thanks her for helping, and Tomoko is actually able to hold a conversation. It's brief, but she speaks with relative ease and is even able to maintain some eye contact throughout part of it. The episode ends with her spending a day at the festival with Yuchan, and at one point, to her surprise, Tomoko realizes she's having fun. Most of her previous interactions with with you have been a source of anxiety for her. She's always comparing the two of them and feeling inferior. Here, she's just able to exist in the moment. She enjoys their time together, and when it draws to a close, they part with a wave and a bittersweet smile, as Tomoko is left wishing for more. I've said before that the universe of Watamote does our girl few favors, but here we see one of them. As the sun sets, she sits by herself, awash in dim pastel tones, all the more lonely in contrast to the levity and amity of the day. She's approached by this person in a bear costume, who, unbeknownst to her, is Megumi. The bear offers her a balloon, and when she reaches out to take it, pulls her into a hug. Though bewildering to her, this gesture of kindness breaks Tomoko's veil of sadness and light returns to the world. She walks home, carrying the balloon and the mood with her all the way. I know this show is a comedy first and a study of mental illness second, so I'm really glad it took a second to give us a scene like this because it addresses an important point. You need help. For all Tomoko's resilience, she's been fighting alone this entire time, and right here, she had a moment of fragility. Of course she would have found her own way out eventually, I have no doubt about that, but it's just so much easier when someone's there to help. In Megumi, we finally have someone with an inkling as to what she's going through. Someone watching over her and providing encouragement and support. And Tomoko seems to understand this on some level. In the last episode of the show, after another failed attempt at achieving some kind of social acceptance, she does something she's never done before. She decides to ask for help. She tracks down Megami with the intention of asking her how she is so well liked. She's just about to force out a greeting when the universe decides to fuck with her one more time. <laughs> And so Tomoko flees the scene in panic, racing home at full clip in a flailing spastic sprint while suffering a complete emotional breakdown, and she doesn't stop until she reaches the safety of her room. This scene is hilarious, but it's also one of my favorite moments of the show from a character perspective. We see earlier in this episode that Tomoko has changed a bit. She's adapted to her new seat in the middle of the class, and she's managing her social interactions a little more easily. And this scene reminds us of just that. She's managing. She's made improvements, but this does not mean her social anxiety is magically gone. You can't just get over mental illness by having a few positive experiences and a little change in attitude. Her disorder is always going to be there lurking underneath the surface, and the sudden awkwardness of this situation throws her into a full-blown panic attack. Tomoko's progress and personal growth over the course of the show is admirable, especially for a teenager working mostly on her own. But what she really needs is professional help. Also, as a side note, watching Yuchan try to run with her big stupid tits cracks me up. Anyway, as young Miss Kuroki spaghettis into the distance, Megami gives us one of my favorite lines of dialogue in the show. While speaking of Tomoko to some classmates, she's always so determined to do something. And if you had to sum up our girl in seven words, I can't think of a better set than that. <laughs> Mega
Now there's one last thing I want to talk about before I call it a night. Watamote ends just as it began, with Tomoko sitting in front of her computer looking at the definition of the Japanese word for unpopular girl. The narration is the same as it was in the first episode, reiterating that her story really doesn't matter. But rather than feeling the anxiety she felt in the beginning of the show, Tomoko just laughs, turns off the computer, and goes to join her family for dinner, reminding us along the way that it doesn't matter. I both agree and disagree. I do get what the show is saying. Being popular doesn't matter. Being cool in high school does not fucking matter. Once you leave, it means nothing. However, having a fulfilling social life and feeling connected to other human beings does matter. Coping with psychiatric disorders in a healthy way does matter. Struggling towards your goals, no matter how many times you fail or what fucked up shit life throws your way, doesn't just matter. It's absolutely necessary. The comedic story that Watamote tells on its surface, the one about a girl who tries and fails to become popular, embarrassing herself constantly along the way. Yeah, that doesn't really matter, other than the laughs we get out of it. But there's another story the show tells. It's about a girl locked in a battle against her own mental illness. A battle which she refuses to concede, no matter how hard it gets. Though flawed and often foolish, she makes a little bit of progress and even snatches a few victories along the way. And though she still has a long way to go, she ends the tale a little wiser and with a slightly healthier outlook on her life. That story matters a lot, if only to me. And so that's the end, and I can finally say something I've been wanting to say for a very long time. Thanks for watching, and go fuck yourself. Good night.